What's going on, everybody? It's Jay. Welcome back to my podcast. It is Thursday, November 10th, and it has now been a couple nights following the midterm election. Now, I said on Monday when I made my predictions that the Republican Party was going to pick up four seats, most likely at least three to four seats in the Senate. They did not get close to that. I said that they were going to pick up 25 to 35 seats in the House. They might pick up 10, maybe, if that. I I, I have no idea. I said that they were going to pick up 29 to 30 governors. They, according to the results that have been rolling in, they're still rolling in. They're probably going to get about 26, maybe. I mean, they massively, massively underperformed last night. And I did not see it coming at all. A lot of the prognosticators didn't see it coming at all. It just was a, I said it was going to be a red wave. Others said it was going to be a big sweeping red crimson tide. Others said it was going to be a red tsunami. This was a ketchup splatter. This was nothing that I expected. And yeah, I was wrong. I was completely wrong. I think lots of other people were too. I mean, I don't think anybody saw this coming. I mean, the only way that... I really think you could have predicted last night's outcome is if you're a Democrat, and that's fine, then you predicted it perfectly. Because guess what? If you're a Democrat, (laughs) if I were you, I would be celebrating a little bit. I'd be proud of the performance that your party pulled off last night. If you're a Democrat, you can sit back and light light a cigar because you most likely are going to maintain the Senate. Republicans are most likely, I mean, the results aren't even in yet. They're most likely going to have... 50 seats, they could get 51, but there's going to be a a runoff in Georgia, and it's most likely that Raphael Warnock is going to win that because Herschel Walker, the Republicans can't carry him. For example, in Georgia, Brian Kemp cannot carry him because Herschel Walker is not a good candidate. And I'll get to who this is a referendum on in a minute, but I want to explain some more of the results that came rolling in. So last night I was looking, I'm like, okay, it's going to be a red wave, right? Maybe this is a good thing. You know, we'll kind of see what happens. As you know, I'm kind of, you know, in the middle on this. It's not like I was rooting for Republicans, but I did want to see some people step in that were conservatives. I thought there was a lot of good conservatives out there that could sort of prevent sort of the negative aspect that I thought was coming from the Biden administration. And, you know, maybe this will be a good thing because maybe if Democrats do maintain the Senate and Republicans do take the House, then if it's divided government, honestly, that's probably a good thing. I'm just shocked by it, honestly. I mean, I'm not really angry by it. It's just more like, what is this party doing? I mean, it's been like this for a, a while now. I mean, I think both parties are insane and you know, I've widely criticized both parties, but if you look at the Republican Party, they are certainly pretty insane as well. They are at least as insane as the Democratic Party, all right? I mean, just look at some of the candidates that they had. Like I said, I'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, the House predictions. I mean, Kevin McCarthy deserves part of the blame for this, all right? He's supposed to be the Senate Majority Leader. The Republican Party did not do anywhere near the damage that they were supposed to do in the House, they were supposed to they were supposed to be projected to pick up at least twenty eight seats. They're gonna get around nine. I mean, they're barely winning this thing, barely. There were several governors that lost their spots that probably should have got reelected. Others that probably should have won and they didn't. So that's what happened. But I want to get to so I want to get to who this whole election is a referendum on. Guess who it is? And I didn't, I really didn't see this coming, but now that I really think about it, it makes sense. This midterm election was a referendum on Donald Orange Man Trump. It was, okay? The evil orange man in the White House. This was a referendum on him. The candidates that he handpicked did not do well at all. I mean, t- I mean, Carrie Lake still hasn't won yet, right? She was an election denier. Don Bullock of New Hampshire was an election denier. You take a look at, um, I mean, Herschel Walker. Tr- Trump chose him because he was an athlete who played for Georgia in college in the 80s. So, I mean, it's just, I mean, that's, 
ridiculous pick. I thought Oz wasn't a very good choice. I mean, there's a lot of candidates out there that a Lauren Boebert, there's a lot of candidates out there that Donald Trump endorsed that did not win. Because guess what? When Trump endorses these people and they say the election was fraud, the election was rigged, there's something seriously wrong, they are playing right into the crazy. And guess what? The American people are not up for crazy right now. They want Trump to go. They don't like this guy anymore. I mean, there are several Americans out there that hate him. There's many that are like, okay, maybe I respect him a little bit, but just go away, go away. And and then there's others, there's a few small percentage out there that still love him, right? They'll say they'll believe anything he says, they'll love anything he does, right? And so this election was a referendum on him because they they see that and they're like, okay, this is insane. Why are you denying? I, I I can't have this. I mean, I may agree with your policy, but I can't have this. So no, go away, go away. All right, it's just. It's crazy, and I'll, I'll kind of explain my my experience with this here. I'll, I'll get into what I was thinking for election. So I was watching this thing, right? And as I saw some of the results roll in, I'm like, okay, you know, it looks like the House, and it's a little closer than I thought. I mean, it, it went from like, okay, it looks like Republicans are going to sweep this thing to, okay, maybe it's a little bit of a underperformance, but that's cool. They're still going to, and until it was around like, I think, 1030, I was like, oh, shit, Pennsylvania. They already lost New Hampshire, and then 11 o'clock, it's like, they're down in Arizona, Nevada, they're only up a little bit in. It's like, what? It's like, what? It's like, wow, I, I really did not expect this. I, I, I thought it was going to be a red wave. This was not a red wave. It, re- it really was not. This was a massive underperformance by the Republican Party, and Trump bears nearly all of the responsibility. Now, that's not to take away from the Democratic Party, okay? Because I think they got their messages across a lot. I mean, you take Roe v. Wade, for example. According to uh, a statistic that I read uh, a week or so ago, or a few days ago, I'm not sure how long ago it was, doesn't matter, Nine, it said like 9% of voters were voting because of Roe v. Wade. That was their number one issue. It turned out to be 27%. And a lot of that were women voters, all right? And so it was more than one in four Americans. Their main concern was Roe v. Wade. Inflation, it was clocked at 35%. It was down a little bit. It was at 31%. And, you know, Republicans certainly did show up. You can see that. I mean, they still did take the House. I mean, it was a lot smaller a lot smaller victory than we thought, but they still did. And I guess that's credit to them. I mean, given it wasn't going to be that hard, but that's fine. But it's like, I mean, yeah, they, I mean, like, but I was like I was saying, they had several good Democratic candidates that I think are very good and who are, some of them I actually agree with. And the ones that I don't agree with, I think some of them seem like fine people. And that should be, that should replace or not replace, but should win against these Republicans who I may agree with, but that are saying elections rigged, elections rigged. This is going to be so it's fraud. Blah. You know, 2020, January 6th, it's just. Can't have that. Can't have that. So, and then you got other people, Carrie Lake, saying, oh, there's something wrong with the election. Do you really think people want to hear that? I mean, the race is still ongoing in Arizona. Do you think voters are seriously going to be like, oh, well, I hope she wins. Wow. It's like, you can't say stuff like that. It's one thing to agree with a politician. And I, I, I some, even the, even the election dyers, I may agree with some of their policies, but if you're going to behave this way, I'm not going to vote for you. Because guess what? Even I don't want crazy, okay? I don't want any of this craziness. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. I mean, I mean, the Republican Party, after last night, really has to look themselves in the eye and be like, okay, um, that was an underperformance. What, what is our agenda here? What are we trying to push? We need to, and I think it really comes down to this, we need to just ignore Trump, ignore him. Just totally forget about him. Move on from him. If you're if you're a fan of Trump, if you like Trump, that's fine, all right? But it's over, okay? If you want the Republican Party to succeed, if you want them to do well, then he, you got to push him aside. I mean, the, the party, they, they can't go on with this because they're tied to QAnon now. They're tied to Trump. They're tied to January 6th, election denial. People all are sick of this, and they think it's crazy. So it's like, stop doing it. Just 
you got to push them aside. But the, in fact, the only part of the country that Republicans did well in, other than maybe New York and all the other, or not, that's not to say that New York is a, is a deep red state. The deep red states, they did pretty well in New York too, but they, they cleaned up in Florida. Ron DeSantis, Ron DeSantis after winning a 33,000 point victory, or 33,000 vote victory in 2018, four years later, he comes in and wins by 1.5 million votes. He won a 20 point victory. Almost 60% of the people who voted for him in Flo- who voted in Florida voted for DeSantis. This is now a blood red state, like a deep south red state. That republic the that state is off the charts now for the Democrats. That whole Obama coalition that was built, I think it's been destroyed now. I mean, literally last year or the year before, this was considered a swing state. I mean, Trump barely won it in 2020, but this is what happens when you have in the minds of the people in Florida, and even I think, I think DeSantis, honestly, I mean, my humble opinion, I think DeSantis is a good governor. And honestly, if you want to see the Republican Party win, you have to go with DeSantis. I mean, if you, because if you take his victory, he had coattails. He carried Rubio with him. There was four districts that Florida picked, that Florida won. They, they I think they've won like five or six so far, or no, they needed to win five. The Florida almost single-handedly brought the House into power last night. Florida cleaned up. It was a massive victory for the Republican Party in Florida. All right? And that's credit to DeSantis. I mean, so honestly, if the Republican Party wants to see, they need to forget Trump, and they need to endorse DeSantis because clearly, I think he's definitely the future of the party. And, but... There's another side to this. This also means now, I think that there is not a sweep that Biden is more likely to become the nominee in 2024, which could make it easier for DeSantis. I mean, if they're going with somebody else, a respectable Democrat, not to say that Biden's not respectable, but he's not exactly he's not exactly doing a great job as president. And we saw that a little bit last night. Like I said, this wasn't this wasn't a. This wasn't credit necessarily to, for the most part, for democratic, good democratic policy. This was more of a referendum on the Republicans who are acting completely asinine. I mean, I think there is no way that Joe Biden, a guy who has been a sleepwalking corpse in the White House throughout his entire presidency, had the best in power performance since 2002 when George Bush was in power and the whole country was united behind him right after 9-11. It's crazy. Look, I, I know I'm acting kind of sort of sort of crazy in this. I, I'm just shocked by it. I'm sort of, it, it's, it's, I've kind of put up with a lot of the craziness. I'm kind of sick of all the craziness and stuff with his elections. I, I still want the results to come in. I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy. I'm just, I, I wanted to make this a good, fun, entertaining episode, and I, I hope it was. I know I kind of went off the deep end a few times. You know, but, you know, maybe this is a good thing. Maybe uh, Republican, maybe it's good for Biden. Maybe since his divided government, he could probably get some good things passed, some good things not. Maybe it's more, you'll see less crazy. Who knows? I mean, that's what it all comes down to. I thought this was going to be a referendum on Democratic policy. I thought it was going to be a referendum on Biden. I mean, you look at his approval rating, it's like 41. He has the worst midterm approval rating. It was worse than Clinton when he got beat by the Republicans, when he lost both, when he lost the trifecta. Obama lost the House by 63 seats in 2010. He had a better approval rating. Trump had a better approval rating. He lost only 40 seats. I mean, it's it's crazy. It has to be a referendum. I mean, I was looking at that one stat. I was looking at the trend. I just, I didn't see it. But when I think about it, yeah, there's been a lot of craziness from this party. There's, about, there's been a lot of craziness from both parties, all right? Let's be perfectly clear about that. But anyway, I just wanted to uh, share some of my thoughts and feelings with what was going on. Oh, and i like to add, Trump even blamed his wife for the Oz pick. He went out, he's like, I blame Melania. She, she chose me to choose Oz. Uh, she, she chose me to choose Oz. 
I chose Oz, okay? What is I supposed to do? She's my wife. She's gonna make me sleep on the couch if I don't pick him, alright? I have no control. None. So anyway, that that's some of the way I'm feeling about this whole election uh, situation. I would uh, like to hear you guys' thoughts and whatnot about this whole thing. It was pretty crazy. Um, yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, I, I hope everything goes smoothly. I hope there's no... We haven't seen any signs of... Uh, violence so far. There's really no. So thank God for that. That at that at least I can say that. But um, yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.